All right. So um, what we want to do, um, what I want to do is I want to introduce kind of a uh, MCMC, uh, Markov Chain Monte Carlo, but in a multivariate setting. Okay. So we're going to do um, Because I think most of our examples so far have been kind of unidimensional, like drawing values from the T distribution or something like that. Okay, so we want to do a multivariate MCMC Markov chain Monte Carlo. Okay, and so I'll just start off with kind of the multivariate Metropolis Hastings. And this is exactly the same as the metropolis, unidimensional metropolis Hastings, except you just generalize to a multidimensional setting. Okay. So let's say you're you have a two-dimensional target distribution. Okay, so we get, let's say um, our example is our target distribution exists in two dimensions. Okay. And so our target PDF is P of X. Okay. So our target is going to be P, P of X. And you've got um, a function proportional proportional to the PDF. And then it's going to be f of x, okay? Where x is, you know, x is a vector in 2D. All right, okay. And so um, the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. is you just have these have some arbitrary starting location. X at time T, okay. And we propose a new location. Okay, X proposed, where kind of X proposed has to come from some two dimensional is drawn from some proposal distribution, right? Proposal distribution of X given XT. So this is a, the proposal distribution is in 2D. And then we move with probability equal to P move, which is the min of one and F of X proposed. divided by f of x current, x at time t, 
And if it's the Metropolis Hastings, then the proposal distribution might not be symmetric. And then, so you might have to include this term, G of um, XT given, you know, is there a difference between you know, if it's not a symmetric thing. All right, and then um, if U is less than P move, except, and that means X at time T plus one, is gonna be equal to X proposed. And else reject and x at time t plus one is just xt. All right, so I hope this feels very similar. <laughs> no, uh, like, nothing shocking or surprising here. Okay, so then let's talk about what kind of things we can use for proposal distributions. All right, so a possible proposal distribution for the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. Okay. Okay, is, is going to be basically uh, a uniform distribution in two dimensions. All right, so we're going to basically say, so we've got, so our current location is XT at, uh, and this is, I'm going to have x1t, and this is made of the coordinates x1t and x2t. Okay, and then we've got basically x proposed. Uh, I'm going to just call it x1p and x2p. All right, and so the way our proposal distribution will work is basically we're gonna say X1P comes from a uniform distribution that goes from X1T minus C to X2T plus C, okay? And then X2P of our proposed value is gonna be drawn from the uniform distribution from X, oh, I messed this up, sorry, this is X1, this is X1 for both. X1T minus C, X1T plus C, and then this is X2T minus K and X2T plus K. Okay. And then C may or may not be equal to K. So basically you've got some coordinate right here. This is X at time T. And then here's your kind of your proposal rectangle. <laughs> and we're basically saying this goes up to x one t plus c, and in the other direction we go down to x one t minus c. You know, this is x two t. This is x one t, and here we got going down to x t 
2t minus k. Um, x2t plus k. Right? And then so just any dot um, you know, inside this rectangle is equally likely to be proposed. Okay, um, and then, you know, according to this, x1t, or I'm sorry, x1p is proposed independently of x2p. Okay, does that make sense as far as kind of a uniform proposal? So now rather than uh, a uniform interval, you have a uniform rectangle in, in 2D, okay? And if it's in 3D, you would have a uniform rectangular prism. <laughs> uh, and then uh, and in higher dimensions, you'd have like a uniform hyper cube, hyper whatever you call this thing, okay? Uh, let me give you your first quiz answer, view quiz answer for today um, is going to be the letter C, the letter C as in cat. C as in cat. Okay. Um, all right. Another possible proposal could be a, a, a multivariate Gaussian, okay? Okay, so we've got, so here we're going to say kind of the proposed value, x proposed, will come from, say, a two dimensional or multivariate Gaussian, where the mean is going to be kind of your current value, x at time t. And then you've got some arbitrary. Um, arbitrary sigma matrix, okay? So proposal distribution. Centered at your current value, xt, with arbitrary um, matrix sigma, okay? And so, you know, you're centered at xt, and then you've got I don't know. Looks even worse. <laughs> All right, something like that. Okay, so that that's that's possible. All right, you can also you can also sample x one and x two independently. Okay, independently. From x2. So in that case, you'd say uh, the proposed value of x1 comes from just a univariate normal distribution 
where the mean is x1 at time t with some arbitrary value sigma 1. And then the proposed value for x2 comes from just the regular old normal distribution centered at x2 at time t and arbitrary value sigma 2. Okay. And so in that case, you know, your um, your uh, normal distribution, you know, is uh, is basically the product of two independent Gaussians, where you know the kind of the major and minor axes of these kind of contour ellipses are parallel and perpendicular parallel to the x1 and x2 axes. Okay. So could you use the Box-Muller transform to generate multivariate normal proposal values? Yes, you could. You could use the Box-Muller transform to generate multivariate normal proposal values, yeah. Yeah, so anything where you're um, doing that, yep. So you can, you can propose values using Box-Muller transform along with um, so box Mueller will give you two independent normal values, and then you can apply the um, bivariate transform to, to make it, um, if you want to have some arb arbitrary sigma matrix, okay? Okay, and, uh, and so, you know, when you have it like this, basically you just have one normal distribution in, uh, in this direction, and then you have another normal distribution in this direction, something like that. And here, we're centered at x1 at time t, and here we are centered at x2 at time t, okay? And so the proposed values, again, x proposed, is x1p and x2p. And maybe we accept or maybe we don't. All right. OK, so um, so that is the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm in, um, in higher dimensions, okay, or in 2D. And um, I'm gonna give this to you guys as a homework assignment, but I think it's rather straightforward because I think you've already done the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm and, or the Metropolis algorithm. And then doing something like this is not, um, is not a huge leap, okay? Uh, and especially if you've cut, if you're using something where you have this, uh, um, where you have kind of an, uh, a symmetric proposal distribution, then um, then you can just use the Metropolis algorithm. You don't even have to, you know, worry about the difference between proposing in higher dimensions. I mean, having a non-symmetric proposal distribution. Okay, but we run into there are potential problems with trying to sample new locations in high dimensions, okay? Um, or not potential problems, just we run into issues when sampling in high dimensions. Okay, so one, so in one dimension versus um, two dimensions versus, I tried to draw this an hour ago and it, it was really hard to draw in 3D. Okay, so in, um, in one dimension, let, let's say your target looks like this, okay? 
So this will be your target. And then in two dimensions, your target And then in 3D, I don't, I don't know how to draw this, but you're, you're basically gonna have these kind of, this ellipsoidal, kind of like this football looking thing, um, but in 3D, right? It's like this, looks like a, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, just, just imagine this thing looks like, um, supposed to look like, I guess, like the Goodyear blimp type of thing, okay? All right, and so when we talk about kind of a proposal distribution here, okay, your proposal distribution, like if, if you're centered at XT, right, if, if we do a uniform proposal, let's say we're doing a uniform proposal, we're going to propose values from, say, here to here, okay? And let's say we're right here. The uniform proposal is now um, a rectangle, okay? And then let's say we're, I don't know, right here. Now my uniform proposal, I don't even draw this, okay, is this rectangular, Thing. All right, that's supposed to look like a, a cube or something in, in high dimensional space, okay? And, um, and we're trying to, to do this. And the problem is, is that in higher dimensions, it gets harder and harder to, um, propose a new location successfully. As the number of dimensions increases, increase, the probability of a successful proposal shrinks. So for example, if, if we just have one value, okay, this is X, all right? And, and let's say we can propose, this is kind of, we're gonna propose any value from down here to up here, okay? And then let's say, let's say just based on this thing, we've got kind of, um, we're gonna accept only, um, this is kind of our acceptance region or something, okay? Okay, so we'll say, um, we propose uniformly on the interval Okay, and then we will accept if the proposed value lands in the red box. Okay, so here the probability of a success is maybe around 20%, okay? If, if the red box is, I don't know, maybe I didn't do a good job drawing this, but let's just say the probability of success is 20% or something like that, okay? So we're gonna propose uniformly on the interval from, you know, xt minus one to x, x, whatever, okay, just, 
exit time t plus or minus some constant. Okay, so we're going to propose uniformly on the interval. And if it lands inside the box, we'll accept it. Okay. If, if I'm in two dimensions or something, I've got an x1 and an x2. Okay, so we're going to say this is x1, this is x2, and now I've got two of these things. Okay, we're going to propose uniformly on x1. Okay, and we're going to pro pro propose uniformly on x2. Okay, and now to kind of so propose uniform on x1 uniform on x2. So we're going to propose uniform on x1 and uniform on x2. And now, what's the probability of hitting both of the red regions, right? So now I have to hit both of my values have to end up inside of the red regions, okay? The probability of getting both in the red regions, so probability of successfully landing in both kind of acceptance regions is now something around Point two squared. Okay. So this is going to be my here I accept and I accept over here. Okay. And if I if I just continue to in, increase the number of dimensions here, I think you can see where this is going, right? So if, if I have three of these things, now I have to hit all three. Okay and it gets a lot harder, okay? And if I have even more, so as I increase the number of dimensions, so here's x1, x2, x3, and this is in four dimensions. We've got x1, x2, x3, x4, and if we're gonna propose uniformly on you know whatever dimensions we're talking about here we're gonna we got a 20 percent probability here 20 percent probability here and 20 percent probability here we've got to kind of hit all uniform i mean all um red red boxes here because we're we're sampling these independently basically the probability Uh, basically a successful proposal is around 0.2 to the third, and now this one's around 0.2 to the fourth. Does that kind of make sense? That as I increase the dimensionality of the target distribution, okay? So if our target distribution ends up in higher and higher dimensions, then it gets harder and harder to propose a value that's gonna get accepted, okay? Because basically, um, if, if X1, X2, and X3 are all kind of being proposed independently, like here I might, I might get X1 right, and then I might even get x2 right, and I might even get x3 right, but then if I get x4 wrong, then, then this entire coordinate gets thrown out, okay? And so it, um, when you're working in high dimensions, if you just kind of um, propose um, each of your core, um, the, try to propose all values at the same time, the probability of a successful proposal um, gets really low with in uh, in very high dimensions, okay. And so this is this is an issue that uh, that we try to address um, 
using um, the next thing that I'll introduce called the Gibbs sampler. Okay, but I just kind of want to make sure this is all okay. All right, let me give you your second quiz answer. Second quiz answer for today is D, D as in dog. D as in dog. That kind of makes sense there. All right, so um, we have the uh, the Gibbs sampler, okay? And so this the Gibbs sampler is used for multi-dimensional target distributions. Okay, and then so let me just kind of contrast. Contrast to the Metropolis Hastings. Okay, so um, in Metropolis Hastings, we propose a new location all at once. Okay. So, you know, if our target exists in say, if our target distribution exists in say 17 dimensions, then we're going to draw from a 17 dimensional proposal distribution and propose all kind of 17 values of your proposed coordinate at the same time, right? And the, the issue is that this is gonna result in very few successful proposals, okay? So we propose a new location all at once. So if the target, distribution exists in 17 dimensions, we propose a new value proposal distribution. And so we propose all 17 coordinates of our new location at the same time. And this results few successful proposals. Okay, so what we do with the Gibbs sampler okay, is we, um, we factor the multivariate target distribution into a bunch of individual conditional distributions. And this is the hard part, okay? But if you can do this, then the Gibbs sampler will be much better. So we factor the multivariate target distribution into many univariate um, conditional distributions. Okay, so this can be difficult analytically. Okay, so that, so that can be done. And then once you do that, once you have it factored, then we draw coordinates 
draw coordinates for the no next location one at a time. Okay, so you've got target PDF is going to be P of X. All right, and then, you know, target PDF, P of X in D dimensions. So we've got, you know, X is x1, x2, x3, up through xd, okay? And then x at time t, we're going to say is x1, t, x2, t, x3, t, going up to xd at time t. Okay, so the next location x at time t plus 1 is selected in d steps okay one for each dimension okay so x1 at time t plus 1 okay so the next, the first coordinate of the next location is drawn from the conditional distribution of x1 given basically all of the other values, x2 at time t, x3 at time t, all the way up to xd at time t. Let me, I ran out of space last time, let me slide this on. Okay, and then x2 at time t plus 1 is drawn from the conditional distribution of x2 given x1 at time t plus 1, x3 at time t, because we haven't sampled the new value of x3 yet, up through xd at time t. Okay, and then x3, the next coordinate, so we're just doing this one at a time. We've got to do D of these. X3, now that I've, so uh, every time I draw a new value, that's, that's going to get factored into the next thing. So I, I'm going to have X1. I have a new, kind of the next coordinate for X1, for X1 t at time T plus 1. I've got X2 at time T plus 1. I haven't done X4 yet. So X4 is still at X4 at time T going up to x d at time t. And this kind of continues on. Um, so let me just do dot, dot, dot. So x i for, for the next location will come from x, uh, the conditional distribution of x i given x1 at time t plus 1 x2 time t plus 1 all the way up to kind of the previous coordinate i minus 1 at time t plus 1 but then we haven't done the next coordinate i plus 1 at time t all the way up to xd at time t Oh, that's okay. Okay, so basically we just, we, we have to factor the distribution into kind of conditional things, okay? And this is kind of the general thing. Let me just kind of, let me just draw it for like maybe a, like a two-dimensional one and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. I think that's okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and 
flip the, uh, the screen here, the slide. Okay, so let's say your target PDF is, you know, looks something like this. Okay, and let me, I guess, and that one, it's just hitting that yet. Okay, and we're going to start at. I'm going to start, let's say, right here. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me just, we'll copy this right here. Okay. Um, all right, so this is going to be our first coordinate. X at time T. And we've got two dimensions. We've got X1 and we've got X2. And what we're going to do is we draw the next coordinate. OK, so I'm going to say X1, the next value of X1 at time T plus 1 is going to come from the conditional distribution of x1 given x2 at time t. So we lock in x2 at time t, which is um, going to be right here. So, so we lock in this and we look at what is the dis, what is the what's the distribution here okay and so the distribution um, if we if we lock this in here is gonna look like uh, it's gonna be a normal distribution so imagine uh, kind of a, a normal distribution um, is that what it would look like yeah I guess it would look something like that okay so we have this kind of this normal distribution where um, well, whatever this distribution looks like um, when you lock in x at time uh, x x2 at time t gets locked in this is going to be uh, the value here okay and then so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a random value we draw a, a sample from this univariate distribution. So maybe I end up sampling right here. Okay. So we sample a new x1 value. on this distribution. Okay, so this is X1. So this is gonna be a univariate normal distribution. I'll just write a univariate distribution. And then now that I've sampled that, okay, because I've sampled okay. So we're um This is kind of the coordinate. And so now that I have this, I'm going to look at, we're going to lock in, we lock in x1 now. Okay. x1. And, um, you know, we sample 
we draw x2 at time t plus 1 from the conditional distribution of x2 given x1 is set to the value that we just drew. Okay, so we use the value that we just drew. plus one. Okay, and then this again, this is going to be a univariate distribution. And so this, this thing over here, once I've conditioned on this, this is going to See the peak is going to be kind of right there, so we're going to have we got a normal distribution right here, something that looks like a normal distribution, and then we just randomly draw a value, so maybe like right there, okay? And this will be kind of um, we sample a new value for x two. And then so the next coordinate is x at time t plus 1 consists of x1 at time t plus 1 and x2 at time t plus 1. Okay, so we, we just sample new coordinates one variable at a time. So in a multi-dimensional, so 10-dimensional thing, does x3 have a conditional distribution based on x1 and x2? So it's it's x3, you have a univariate dimension distribution based on all, all of the other ones. So if you're in 10 dimensions, it's unidimensional after you lock in the other nine, okay? But you've only sampled, so x3, what do you do for x3? Well, you have new values for x1 and x2. So you use the new values for x1 and x2, but you use the old values for x4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so you use all of the old values that, uh, basically you use the newest values that you have, okay? And if you haven't sampled the new values yet, they're, they're your most recent old values. Okay, and you just kind of keep cycling through updating one coordinate at a time, right? And it sounds inefficient. It sounds like, oh my goodness, I've got to do, in my 10 dimensional setting, I have to do each dimension one at a time. But it actually ends up working out a lot better this way because trying to propose all 10 dimensions all at the same time rarely results in a successful proposal, okay? So trying to propose um, all of the coordinates all at the same time, you, you end up getting you end up just rejecting a ton of proposals, right? Again, trying to, you're like trying to thread the needle, but in 10 dimensions, it's really hard to do. Um, so you just break it down into 10 smaller things, and it's a lot easier to kind of, uh, and you're not actually not even sampling, you're just drawing one coordinate at a time. And every time you draw a coordinate, you update it. So it's a, uh, I don't know, do you guys remember coordinate descent from back in 102A? Okay. So in coordinate descent, you locked in one variable and then you, you minimized based on that, okay? And it's kind of like that, except we're not minimizing. We're locking in one variable and it becomes like a unidimensional function or unidimensional distribution. And then we're just gonna randomly draw from that unidimensional thing, okay? And once you randomly draw in there, you lock in that value and then you just, you have another unidimensional distribution and you, and you randomly draw from that unidimensional one. Okay, let me give you your last quiz answer. Last quiz answer is the letter A, A as an apple. A is the last quiz answer. And, uh, and we'll end here today. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's it. All right, have a good day, you guys.